welcome to Life Beats Radio. I am your host, Dawn Mack, and so glad to be here with you on this Friday Eve. How has your week been? I hope it's been wonderful. Mine certainly has been, and uh, we are getting excited and looking forward to a great weekend. I mean, fall has finally arrived in North Carolina. The trees are changing color, and you can just really see the magnificence of God in all his glory um, this time of year by just so many colors in the air, and, and everything is crisp and fresh and it just it just feels wonderful outside. It's just such a wonderful time of year, and uh, so I hope that wherever you are listening tonight, that um, you are enjoying the fall season so far. Your week has been great, and your day has been phenomenal. And if you're brand new to our program, welcome. We are always glad to have new listeners, and you picked a great night because our guest tonight, um, we are so very excited about speaking with, and. Uh, you will be glad that you you stop by. For all of you who are regular listeners, thank you for being back here this evening. We're so glad to have you with us. And uh, I want to give you a little bit of um, uh, background on our guest. He is on the line and we'll be picking up in just a moment. Um, he is just, I mean, he has been around a good while in the contemporary Christian music scene. And um, I have been a fan of his for quite some time. He is just a phenomenal artist. And um has done some amazing things in Christian music. I mean, he's had so many singles, four Dove Awards, and uh, at the 25th GMA Dove Awards, he was New Artist of the Year. I mean, he has gone on to put out hits um, such as I Surrender All and He Walked a Mile in My Shoes and Saving the World. He has done some amazing things. Um He's collaborated with people like Bob Carlisle and B.B. Winans on I Will Follow Christ, um, among many others. He's put out a Christmas album. I mean, it's it's almost like what has he not done? He is an incredible artist. And now uh, the excitement continues because he has a brand new album out that actually just came out within the last couple of days. And, uh, and it's called Rededication. It is a wonderful album. I've had an opportunity to listen to it, and oh, I was so blessed and touched by it and um the first hit off the album you know is when i lift my hands and working on a building and of course we will be um playing those this evening i can't wait to share those with you just to give you a little bit of a taste so you can you can go out and buy it but we are so very proud and honored to welcome this evening mr clay cross hello hello well thank you for having me on the show well, thank you for being here. We appreciate your time this evening. Yeah, hey, where does your show um, air out of? Where, like, where you guys calling from? I am actually out of North Carolina. All right. Well, I like. Hey, yeah. A lot of kind of a, a neighboring. A, what's that? I have a lot of friends in North Carolina. Do you? Yeah, I've yeah. born and raised here. In case you couldn't, you know, my accent didn't give it away, but um. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's a lovely state. I love the fact we have the mountains on one end and the coast on the other. And, you know, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, it makes for a great day trip either way you go. Um, of course, this time of year, the mountains is the place to be. So it's it's a beautiful state. And um, and so very, very glad to be here for sure. Um, I, I really do appreciate your time this evening. I know you've been very busy. And I first want to congratulate you on the release of your brand new album, Rededication. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I'm very, uh, you know, I am very grateful for this for this new project. I mean, it's 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 been a long time coming, and you know, for God to have provided and allowed me to do this, and for the songs to have come about like they have, I'm just uh, I'm overjoyed. Uh, well, a- as you should be. I mean, you have been blessing us with your music for quite a while now, um, since the 90s. I mean, when I think about that, to me, that doesn't sound that long ago. But I remember when I first really became interested and, and grew to love contemporary Christian music was in that era when you were, you know, putting out music and other many great artists like Stephen Curtis Chapman and, and so many others that I came to be fans of and, and to love the music. Um, that was kind of my time to kind of break into that and um and I've been a huge fan of the genre ever since. Um there's just so much blessing that comes out of the music that's produced and uh and yes, I mean you are a phenomenal songwriter and performer and I've been a fan of yours for quite a while. Well, I appreciate you saying that. You know, I've been doing this a long time now and 
I was telling someone yesterday that as the years go by, I I seem to appreciate every opportunity that God gives me uh, even more than I did years ago because it's just you start to step outside of yourself and see uh, how rare it is to, to be able to do these things. And it's uh, I take now I take every assignment I think even more seriously than I did when I was younger. So you know things like this interview or even you know going somewhere to sing or the opportunity to record the CD. I know that it's not just an accident. I know that God ordained it and wanted me to to give my best for it for His glory. Well, and you know, and I think that's how we have to look at everything. I mean, as I am sitting here interviewing you tonight, I mean, you know, six months ago, um, this show is still fairly new, but just to, I would have never dreamed that God would have had me cross paths, you know, and I would be sitting here interview, interviewing you tonight. It, it's just amazing how when He wants something to happen, He lets it happen, and. Everything lines up in his way, and uh, so, you know, with your career as phenomenal as it has been, that is no exception, you know, and and speaking of that, I want to kind of back up a little bit, because most people that know Clay Cross know you as the songwriter, the singer, the performer, uh, this awesome contemporary Christian artist, but before the life of Clay, Clay Cross as the recording artist, you were a FedEx courier. Now, how did you get from, was music something you always kind of was leaning towards doing, hoping to do one day, or did it just kind of happen by accident? Oh, you know, I've always liked to sing. And as I got older, when I mean older, like throughout my teenage years and on into college, I had pretty much um, come to the conclusion that that God had given me a great talent to sing, but that I didn't know where I was going to be able to use it because getting from – you know, point A to point B. Point B is you're a working musician. You're traveling. You're touring. You're recording. You're on the radio. It's 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 close to an impossibility when you consider how many people out there have that dream to do that and how few really get to do it. And I was aware of those odds, so I didn't know what was going to happen. I was kind of frustrated, and then God opened up the doors, and allowed me to go into it. So yeah, I mean, I worked for Federal Express. That was how I paid the bills, and it was a good company to work for. But then God opened up the doors for me to to be able to leave that and go into music full time. And you know, I've been doing that now for the last uh, almost twenty years, singing, sharing, writing, and um, now I also work at a church. You know, I work at First Baptist Church in Bentonville, Arkansas, and worship pastor there. So, you know, God just continues to let me do music, and uh, it's it's a huge blessing. Well. And I know it is. I mean, I think it's phenomenal that, you know, it's amazing because to hear your story, it's, you know, it's such an inspiration because I'm sure there are people out there listening this evening that maybe have similar aspirations and dreams and love music and want to get into it. And uh, and so what an encouragement to them to know that, you know, hey, they may be in their day job today, but tomorrow they may be walking through those doors that God wants to put them through um, into the career of their dreams. So, um, and for you, what was it like for you the first time you heard your song on the radio <laughs> it was uh it was a pretty big deal you know we lived in nashville at the time and i remember when we when we did hear it on the radio uh we were at home and uh we just uh you know we started running around the house because <laughs> it was like it was this new thing i mean you may have seen the movie uh that thing you do and when the band first hears their song on the radio, how excited they get, and they're running around town telling everybody. And that's kind of how me and Renee felt at the time because, you know, it was uncharted territory for me. And to hear my voice coming across the radio, it's incredibly surreal. Oh, yeah. I, I can only imagine. I would have been doing a major happy dance, you know, and probably still wouldn't believe it. I would have to, you know, like call the radio station and go, did you really just play a song by, you know, and call my name? And, and they would confirm it, but I still wouldn't believe it. You know, I'd have to hear it again and again. Um yeah. Well, that is awesome. And of course, now since that first time hearing yourself on the radio, you've heard yourself a lot, I'm sure, because you've released so many, you know, 21 singles to be exact uh to Christian Radio through the years, which I think is just absolutely phenomenal. And um and so let's talk a little bit about this brand new album, 
which I am very excited about. As I was saying in the intro, I've had a chance to listen to it, and it's a great album, which was no surprise. I knew it was going to be awesome when I got it, but it I love the music on that. And um, why was now the right time to release a new CD for you? Well, I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you that when you record a CD, there has to, there have to be some some variables in place and things like obviously songs you have to have the songs that you feel confident enough to record and then you have to have a talented team to help you record them which is the producer and the musicians and and a mixer and people like that um, and thirdly and it's just the reality of it you have to have the budget to be able to go in and do it you know because mm. it, people may not know out there but it, you can't just you know come up with a few dollars and, and make a good sound of recording, it, you know, there, there are costs involved in making a quality sound of recording. And for years, I just honestly wasn't in a place to be able to do that independently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But last year, a good friend came forward and said, look, I believe in you. I believe in your music. I want you to record a CD and I want to make that happen. So that, that came about through a good friend of mine and uh, God provided, you know, that and provided the songs and provided uh, the talented team that we put together. So you're hearing the result of, of um, something that God put together. And I'm just – I just stand extremely grateful and humbled that God allowed me to record a new CD just this year. Mm, and and that's amazing. Great story. <clears throat> Thank you so much for sharing that. And on this particular CD, is there a message um, that you want to share with your new music? Well, you know, the the title of the CD is Rededication, and I, that is the theme to me, just the idea of looking at your life and saying, Lord, um, I may be pleased where I'm at, but I, I could, things could be better. I, I want to be closer to you. And many people are going to look at their life, and if they're honest with themselves and with God, they're gonna, they may say, I'm not pleased with, with where I am spiritually where I am in my relationship with you, and and I'm not blaming you, God. I'm blaming me, and I want to be closer to you, so I rededicate my life to you across the board. I recommit my life to you, and it's a powerful thing, and I I did that way back in the year 1998. I recommitted my life to Christ, and you know, since that time, I've come to realize that this act of rededicating your life can be a lifestyle of, of, Lord, I want to continue to move forward with you. I don't want to just um, feel like I'm in a good place and my feet are in concrete. I want to keep moving forward with you in this relationship, in this what we call a walk with you. I want to walk forward with you. So I recommit my life every day to you, Father. So that's that's the theme of it, staying close to God. Well, and, you know, it is really our walk with God is really an everyday walk. It is, you know, it's not something we can just say, okay, today I'm going to rededicate my life to God, and then tomorrow we just go on about our business. I mean, it is a daily walk. and. Uh, right. And some days on this earth are struggles for us. I mean, you know, the things that come at us unexpectedly, the the things that crop up that we deal with. And my goodness, I am so thankful that I have God in those moments because mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine otherwise, you know, trying to go through this life and not have him by my side. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a perfect title for your album because it, it really – The title alone gives us a lot of food for thought in terms of what does it really mean to rededicate our life to God, you know, and and what does it mean personally for us and what is it we are going to do? Because it is a – it's not only a dedication, it's a commitment, and uh, I think the two go hand in hand for sure. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) <laughs> and as I'm, and I'm going to kind of backpedal a little bit because as, as you're talking about this album and and what you hope the message is, it kind of it brings to mind the um, the ministry that you and your wife Renee founded in 2001, Holy Homes Ministry, because it's kind of along the same lines. And and talk a little bit about that because um, I think it's a powerful ministry that you guys have um, put together, and mm. it's such a great outreach. Well, Holy Homes is is something that God has called us to, to have, for our home to be holy, to be set apart, to be rare, to be special for God's glory. And, you know, we realized this back in that year that I'm telling you about, 1998, when I rededicated my life to Christ, when um, truly we both rededicated our lives to Christ. We came to realize that we were a Christian couple that um, were not close to God. 
we we were we were just I guess comfort was king, and we were just um, trying to please ourselves. And you know, we 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 weren't out of church; we were church attenders, but we had this ability to leave a church meeting and just kind of turn off those those important aspects of our life. Um, so. What came out? You see, what I'm trying to tell you is, we didn't just decide to start doing marriage ministry. We lived through a life-changing recommitment to Christ ourselves. And the whole time during that period, I was out singing, and I was I was really booked up to go out and, and sing. And I, I began to share more from stage about what God was doing in my life, in my marriage, and I got really honest about specifics of what God was dealing with me, and it was powerful, and Renee began to join me on stage, and suddenly we realized that we had a powerful uh, combination when we both would share. So we started doing more and more events, and lo and behold, churches started asking us to lead marriage events, and that's how this ministry, Holy Homes, was born out of uh, out of our own life and out of our own uh, victory that, that God had given us. So we were honored to share that with other people. Ah, oh, praise God for that, Clay. I mean, um, and, and and what a perfect, you know, all the more fitting for your title of your current album because just as the album itself calls us to rededicate ourselves to Christ, in in marriages everywhere. I mean, you you brought up such an important point that I myself in my own marriage, you know, at at one point back in the day, it it was like that. You know, my uh, former husband and I, we went to church. And but we would leave church and church would just stay there. You know, we didn't take church with right. us. We didn't take God with right. us. And we went about our life. And like you say, life was going good. It was kind of like you know, uh, we weren't drawing close to God because things were going good. And and I think a lot of people fall into that trap. You know, married couples, singles, regardless, it 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 happens. And so it is a very conscious thing. And um, and that is and I think the fact that you and your wife walk through it yourself and realize this is something we need to be doing spoke volumes to people that you've since ministered to because you're a living example of it, you know? Well, it's been powerful to not just get on stage and tell people what we know to be true, but to just honestly tell people that we've lived through it. And, you know, mm-hmm. that, that's a very honest thing. It's a very honest thing that you just told me about your life, and mm-hmm. I think it's powerful for your listeners to hear that. For me yeah. and you to be Christians telling people, hey, it can be a struggle sometimes. And Mm -hmm. God wants to walk with us through those seasons and wants us to have uh, more peace and more victory. And the only way is through him and through a closer walk with him. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Now, one of the songs on your new album, Working on a Building, you collaborated with Russ Taft and Melinda Doolittle from American Idol. And and talk a little bit about how that collaboration kind of came together. I have been a fan of both of them um, since they hit the music scene pretty much. And um, and I love the fact that Melinda has ventured into the contemporary Christian music world um, and is doing some wonderful things there. And, of course, Russ has always been putting out wonderful stuff. But how did that collaboration kind of come together? Because it's a great song, Clay. Well, hey, thank you. Uh, my producer, his name is Reggie Ham, and he's longtime friends with Russ Taft and has also been friends with Melinda. So he arranged for me to be able to meet them and record this song with them, and it's just been amazing. You know, Russ, for me, um, I I have followed his music for many years, from when he was with the group The Imperials back in the 70s and 80s. Mm. I loved his voice back then. Now I'm showing my age, but hey, that's cool. I liked him back back then, and, you know, then he went into his solo career, and over the last, you know, decade or whatever, he's been traveling with the Gaithers and – but he's just got one of the most rich one of the richest tones vocally i think in any genre of music so it was a thrill for me to record that with him and then when melinda doolittle who some of your listeners may be familiar with from her time on american idol a few years ago she did really well i think she came in third place mm-hmm. for the whole season which is pretty great um when she sang on it as well it just it took it to a whole other level so you know very cool and I'm I'm just uh, I'm thankful that God puts me with people like this. 
Well, I, I have to say, the three of you on this song is a great collaboration. The the song turned out so well, and uh, and it's quite catchy. I'm going to play it here before the end of the interview um, for the listeners. But it All is right. such a catchy song. I mean, it is really one of those that um that people will listen to time and again just because the vocals are outstanding and the mes- the message, more importantly, is it's really neat. You know what it presents and what it talks about, and. Um, you know, because really, at the end of the day, we're all working on a building we're of some kind, um, you know, and, and we've got to lay that foundation before we can build the building. I mean, and, and the foundation is in God. And if we start with God, you know, it's no telling what the building is going to look like when we're done, you know. Um, and that was my takeaway from the song when I heard it initially. So it's um it's a great song. Thank you. And, yeah, you just described it. I would try to describe it, but you just did. I mean, it's about <laughs> – you know, it, it, it's truly about looking at your life as a process, and, you know, uh, Paul talked about, you know, working at your salvation, and it can be debated exactly what he meant by that. But, you know, it's certainly an ongoing process of, of being refined by God and, and finding areas that need to be improved and need to be renovated in our lives. And so it it, it worked out well to, to kind of tie that imagery in with, with this song, Working on a Building. And uh, just, again, I was just thrilled to be able to sing it with Russ and Melinda. Well, and and not only have you released this wonderful new album, but you've been so busy this year. Your 2013 is shaping up to be an incredible year for you because in March, you know, you released a book, Dashboard Jesus, Distinctive Reminders for Distracted Men. Talk a little bit about that book, if you don't mind. Yeah, you know, I don't think just men are forgetful. Men and women are forgetful, but (laughs) men – Men for sure can can you know women are good about cate- you know being able to multitask and have a lot of things on their mind and organize them. Men were kind of on to one thing, and sometimes important other aspects can be forgotten and a lot for a lot of men, that one thing is their career, you know just just trying to provide for their family, and other things can take second, third, fourth, fifth priority. And this book is simply a, a series of reminders to men. I do it in kind of a funny and honest way throughout this book. Um, just uh, subjects of, of either their sexuality or, or subjects of the way they're carrying themselves in the workplace. You know, as a Christian man, to, to ask, do I really come across as a Christian man? Am I am I representing God with how I'm dealing with people, with my speech? With whether I'm, I'm honoring my wife at work, you know, with how I speak of her, you know, or am I looked at as, as as a flirt or something like that at work? So I'm just I'm very honest in this book about about men um, really looking at their life, you know, their finances, their their those that are dads, you know, their roles as fathers. So I kind of run the gamut in this, but it's it's a book for all men, and uh, Dashboard Jesus, the, the the title just comes from the idea of. You know, there was a time in my life where I was I just got desperate for to be closer to God and I attached this little Jesus figurine to my dashboard. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so everywhere I was driving, you know, I I had that there staring at me and you know, it's not it's not some graven image or some idol. It's just, it's simply a uh, or it's not sacrilegious in my mind. It was just something to remind me of the of the real God that that's in my life, you know, and, and to, to keep my eyes on him and I over the last few years, I've since replaced it with – I put a scripture on my dash, dashboard, but the <laughs> the imagery of that dashboard Jesus is powerful. There's something mm-hmm. in our life that will remind us to stay close to God. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. and and I think sometimes that's all that we need is that is that reminder, you know, and, and something that's visible because so many of us are – you know, we're visual learners. We're visual beings, and if we see it, it tends to kind of ring true in our minds and and helps us to remember, you know, Um, I know I'm that way. And uh, so I think that is such a neat, a neat concept. And and who knew at the time you did that, that one day would be the name of a book, you know, that you would write. So (laughs) God was planting seeds within you back then for this book, but you didn't even know then you were going to write. I think that's so cool. Um, And so, you know, of course, we know Clay Cross has never forgotten a thing in his life, especially considering you wear many hats. You're a husband, a dad, and I say that in jest, by the way, um, a recording uh-huh. artist, a songwriter, an author, a worship leader, an entertainer. And I must tell you, 
if you haven't forgotten something in in the midst of all that, you're not human. <laughs> so let's talk I'm about not. balance. How do you do it all? I mean, really. Well, you know, the important thing for me is is keeping my foundation in Christ secure and just just not getting off track and you know having a balance of all these things. You know, God doesn't give me more than I can handle, and and everything you just named. They're all blessings in my life. But to be able to be a worship pastor at First Baptist Church, Bentonville, Arkansas, that's 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 very important to me, and I'm thankful for this for this position God's given me. Uh, to be able to write books, to be able to record CDs, to be able to travel and sing the song, the new songs, and all the songs that God's blessed me with over the years. In those times where God has me and Renee going out to share together to people, you know, He. He gives us sanity, and he gives us balance to be able to handle all that. I mean, you just spouted it out. It sounded like, oh, how does this person do it? But <laughs> don't worry. I'm not doing all that every day. But, but yeah. <laughs> God, spreads it out. God spreads it out enough and allows me to hopefully do it well and for his glory. Well, you know, it's so true what they say. If God brings you to it, he's going to bring you through it. So, um, you know, and, and I think he puts us here with a purpose in mind and – we fulfill the purpose, and if we give him free reign, it's no telling how many hats he's going to allow us to wear, depending upon what he wants to use us for and his purpose here. And uh, and I think that's just so incredible to know that he kind of holds our future, and and in that we don't really have to worry about what that future is going to be because he's already got it figured out for us, and that's the beauty of it. And of those many career hats, is there one that kind of fits you the most comfortably? Well, I'm a singer. There's no doubt. I mean, I just, we talked about this early in the interview. When I was a teenager, I realized that I could sing, and that's something that I've always enjoyed. And it's it's kind of like riding a bike for me. You know, it's like something I don't think I'll ever forget. Um, whether I'll always be able to sing, you know, with the strength and power that I did as a 20 year old, I don't know. But hey, I'm 46 now, and I feel like I still have the pipes that he gave me. So. It's just something that I enjoy doing. So singing is is way up on that list for me as far as just natural abilities. But mm-hmm. I'm praying for God to equip me in these other areas and um, and to just uh, as freely as freely um, oh. give of myself in those areas as well. Oh yeah, and I have no doubt if if he I mean just think of all the incredible things he's already done in your life, um, you know since you've been walking with him, and it's no telling what he's got around the corner for you. And speaking of that, what you've already had an incredible 2013, but what's coming for you for the rest of of this year that um, we should know about? Oh well, you know I'm I'm staying busy. Um, really, this is a new position for me at at First Baptist Church Bentonville, Arkansas. So. I'm just really getting acclimated there, meeting everyone, and 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 uh, I'm excited about working with the the praise team there and the choir. And it's uh, you know, hey, pray for people in local ministry because it's it's big work, and it is uh, it's a different kind of job than I've had in the past of traveling around and being around people that I'm ministering to for just a few hours and then leaving their town. You know, with local ministry. I'm living with these people basically. You know, I'm seeing them all mm-hmm. the time every Sunday and at rehearsals and at, at staff meetings and and it's uh, you know, it it's real it's real life, you know, and mm. I I'm I'm thankful for this job. So that's a big part of my my the rest of the year, but you know, me and my family, we've just we've just changed locations. We 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 were Memphis, Tennessee people, but we just recently moved to the northwest corner of Arkansas for this position. So you know that's kind of on my plate right now, just getting us settled in here and um, just looking to the future though at more opportunities that God might have for me in ministry. I'm just uh, I'm relying on Him. Well, it it's going to be exciting just to know, you know, to even think what He may have coming for us as listeners of your music and you know any other books you may write down the road. I mean, it's no telling what He's got in store for you, but I'm sure whatever it is, it's going to be phenomenal and. Um, It'll be a great ride for you and your family, I'm sure. So I want to thank you so much for being with us this evening and spending a little bit of time with us talking about, you know, your new album and all the great things you've got going on. And my gosh, it is easy to see how much God has richly blessed you and your family and continues to do so. And, And I'm blessed just by you being here today and sharing that with all of us. Well, you're very kind. And I just, uh, hope, I hope that, uh, this, 
this program and everything that you're doing on this radio station continues to be an encouragement to people out there because, you know, I don't need to tell you people are hurting. People uh, people need hope, and mm-hmm. the message we give them through the gospel of Christ is, is the ultimate hope. So I pray that they see that. I pray that us people that have known Christ for a long time, uh, it rekindles that in us as well because uh, it's it's eternal, and God's love is there for us. So you're thanking me, but I'm thanking you for doing this show. Uh, thank you so much. Well, God bless you and your family, and uh, we are going to wrap up our show uh, playing a couple of your songs off of the album Rededication. And uh, and thank you so much for blessing us um, for nearly, what, two decades now with your music. We I know greatly it. appreciate make it. Feel, hey, you're making me feel old, but hey, that's okay. I, <laughs> well, age is in your mind, right? You and I are the same age, so, you know, you're not old. If you're old, I'm old, so we're not going to be old, okay? <laughs> okay. I agree. All hey, right. Thanks well, for having hey, me on the show. Oh, thank you so much, Clay. Take care, and God bless. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. We have been speaking with Clay Cross, and uh, just a phenomenal artist. I don't know if if you're like me, but I've been a longtime fan of his. Love his music, loved everything that he's put out. And uh, in the new album, I'm so ex- I was so excited when I found out he had a new album out because it had been a while. And uh, I'm telling you, if you haven't bought it, haven't heard it, you're going to get a little um, sneak peek in a few moments. But I encourage you to go to your local Christian bookstore, pick it up, order it offline because, or visit his website because it is an awesome album and it just actually released two days ago so it's brand brand new um but i'm telling you you will be encouraged you will be blessed and uh and his songs are just classic clay cross songwriting so uh, we're going to play a couple of tunes off of that right now um First, we're gonna. I'm gonna bring to you uh, the song he did. He collaborated with um, Russ Taff and Melinda Doolittle, called "Working on a Building." And then uh, we will close out the show with another song uh, from that called "When I Lift My Hands." And so, before we play the music, I just want to thank everyone for being here this evening and tuning in, and all the new listeners. Thank you so much for stopping by, and a huge thank you, very special thank you to Clay Cross for his time with us this evening. So, with that. Have a great Friday, everyone, and a wonderful weekend. God bless you all, and we'll be back here again very soon. Take care, and good night. Working on a building Something that will stand against the wind Working on a building mm, That'll pass the test of time and never end Working on a temple mm, Where I will live forever with my friends Until the work is done I'm working on a temple Yeah, yeah With the folks around the world Can all be one i
the reason that we gather here today. And Father, it's for you each time we lift a song of praise. But still I want to show you more with everything I am that my heart longs for you. When I lift my hand, I'm breathing. 